whether you're an electronic music producer or a guitarist in a band, you're gonna want your songs to have contagiously catchy riffs in them. So here's my six hacks for synth or guitar riffs that your fans will not be able to get out of their heads. But first... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so close. Right, Harmony here, and today on the Hack Music Theory Show, how to write a catchy riff. What's a riff? Well, a riff is a melody but it's not the main melody. So in a song, riffs occupy the same accompaniment category as chord progressions. And just like chord progressions, riffs loop. So unlike the lead melody, uh, vocals for example, which is varied and you know develops as it unfolds, riffs are way more repetitive. So when they're done well, this means they can be creative and contagiously catchy. All right, let's jump in. So the chord progression that we're going to be writing a riff over is in D Dorian. So that's just all the white notes with D as the root. And the chords are D minor, F major, C major, and G major. And this is the same chord progression that we used in our video last week about how to write a catchy chorus chord progression. Uh, and this example is from the chorus uh, of our new single, Eyes Love For You. And we don't need to draw in all the full chords. We can just put down the root note for each chord because this is gonna form the template over which we're gonna write our riff. And remember when you're doing this template, make sure you get the chord changes exactly correct. So you want to know exactly when the chord changes happen. So the riff is going to align with those changes. And just to be clear, once we have finished writing our riff, we'll delete this root note template. And with that, we're now ready to write our riff. So here's hack one harmonic notes. So because riffs are melodic, but they're also attached to the harmony, in other words, the chords, a great place to start writing a riff is with the harmonic notes. In other words, the notes in the chord. And what I'm talking about is the one, the three, and the five. So for example, over the D minor here, the, the chord is D, F, A. So let's start by putting in those notes. And before we do anything, we want to change our grid to 16th notes, because that's going to open up way more opportunities opportunities and possibilities for our riff. Okay, so here we go. D, F, A. Now we also don't want our riff sounding like arpeggios, which is a broken chord, so a chord played one note at a time, just going one, three, five. Um, so we want to change up a little bit. We want to be more creative than that. So let's pull this last one, um, the A, let's pull that note down an octave. And this is what we get. Now, whenever you're wanting to write something that is contagiously catchy, you always want to be thinking about symmetry. Symmetry is not only deeply comforting to the listener because it creates that sense of familiarity, but symmetry allows us as songwriters and producers to reinforce a musical idea and make it even more catchy. So let's create symmetry in our riff by reusing this melodic contour that we did over the first beat of the first bar. Let's reuse that over the first beat of the second bar. And the chord there is C major. So what we're going to do is start on the one, which is C, and we're going to go up to the three, which is E, and then we're going to drop down to the five, which is G. And now we just need to fill in the gaps. So over the F major chord, F is the one. So we could play the three, which is A, and then we could go up to the five, which is C. And that's actually the note that the second bar starts on. And then what we can do is we can reuse that melodic contour over the G major chord at the end here. And that way we create even more symmetry. So we could go G, 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 and then up to the three of G major, which is B. So let's have a listen. Hack two, syncopation. Syncopation is accenting the offbeat and playing around with these offbeats in your riffs is exactly how you're going to inject life and energy into its rhythm. So let's have some fun with this. Um, over the first uh, chord, let's move those two notes a 16th later and always remember symmetry where you reuse a melodic contour in the second half of the riff 
do the same thing with the syncopation. So we want symmetrical syncopation. Otherwise, it doesn't feel familiar the second time around. So that's the whole point. We're creating something that's fresh because the notes are different. In the first melodic con contour here, it went D, F, A. And then in the second bar, it goes C, E, G but the melodic contour is the same and the syncopation is the same, but it's fresh notes. So it's this wonderful balance of something that's fresh and familiar. Okay, let's do the same with um, with the F major. Let's move um, this one back a 16th and everything we do here, we want to do in the symmetrical part at the end here. So we're going to move this G back um, a 16th as well. And then uh, this long note here, uh, let's actually bring that to 16th earlier. So there's going to be a little element of surprise there, which is super cool. And then always thinking symmetrical, we're going to do the same with the last note. Let's have a listen. Here we go. Hack three, non-harmonic notes. So right now our riff is still made up exclusively of harmonic notes. In other words, notes that are in the chords. And this means our riff is still sounding kind of like a bunch of arpeggios. So to make our riff sound more like a melody, what we need is to add non-harmonic notes. In other words, notes that are not in the chords. And these notes are what create interest, tension and movement to our riff and turn it into a catchy melody. So a great place to start with this is by adding passing notes. A passing note is a note that you add in between two other notes. So for example, the D to the F, a passing note would be E that you put in the middle. So not only does that connect those two notes, but now you create movement in this little melodic run. And remember, always thinking symmetry. So if you add that there, you want to add the same thing in the second half. So between the C and the E, we're going to add the passing note D. Then, and I'm sure you've already spotted these, over the F major, we can also add a passing note between the A and the C. So that's B. And always thinking symmetry. So what we do here, we want to do at the end in the second half. So over the G major chord between the G and the B, we also add a passing note of A. Okay, let's have a listen. Here we go. Hack four motifs. A motif is a short musical idea which we can reuse to give our music structure and therefore make it memorable and catchy. And by now having gone through the first three hacks, you undoubtedly have something in front of you that can be used as a motif. So this is where we go motif hunting. And the motif that is jumping out of me here is this little ascending three note run that we created by adding that passing note. So we've got one here, we've got one here, we've got one here, we've got another one here. But even though we've got four of these little ascending three note runs, not once do they happen on the same three notes. So I think that's exactly what we need to add right now. So over the D minor chord, we've got this little gap here of two 16th notes. I think we should go A, B, C. And that also gives us a little taste of what's about to come because we get that same run A, B, C over the next chord. And always thinking about symmetry. So what we add in the first half, we want to add in the second half. What that means is over the C major chord where we've got the G and then at the moment we've got these two 16th notes open, we want to add in another ascending three note run. So we're going to go G, A, B. And that G, A, B is then repeated over the last chord, the G major, making this even more catchy. So let's have a listen. Here we go. Hack five, harmony. Adding even just a little bit of harmony can give you a lot of power. So wherever you have a long note, see if you can find that long note a friend. And what I'm thinking over the F major chord here where we've got that uh, C, let's add an A on top. And instead of bringing them in ex at exactly the same time, let's bring that A in on the fourth beat. So that's going to be bang on a snare drum. And it's really going to emphasize that beautiful harmony we're going to get here. 
and always thinking symmetry, we want to do the same thing at the end in the second half. Um, so over the G major chord where we've got this uh, B, we're going to be adding a G on top. And same thing again, let's bring the G in on the fourth beat. So wah, as that snare wax, we're going to get this beautiful harmony coming through there. Let's have a listen. Hack six, fix perfect intervals. Now, if you've watched any of these hack music theory videos before, you've probably heard me going on about fixing the melodic intervals of perfect fourths and perfect fifths. And by the way, a perfect fourth is the interval of five semitones and a perfect fifth is the interval of seven semitones. And the notes that create these perfect intervals vibrate so perfectly together, hence the name, that when you're in a melody and you go from one note to the next note, which is up or down a perfect fourth or a perfect fifth, those notes vibrate so similarly that it creates a rather boring and colorless melodic movement. So we don't like perfect fourths or perfect fifths in our melodies. So now we want to go through the whole riff, two notes at a time, counting the semitones in between them and make sure that we don't have any melodic movements of five semitones or seven semitones. And I was conscious of this while writing the riff, so there aren't any, but I want you to be careful of one area. Wherever you put harmony into your riff, what's gonna happen is whatever the last note is that you played in that harmony, so for example, over the G major here, we've got the B and then the G, up top came in last so that note whatever the last note is in your harmony is what the ear will hear as the melodic note so the ear is going to follow this melody like this it's going to go g a b and then as soon as this high g comes in the ear hears that as being the next note in the melody which means that we actually need to look at the last note here which is the high g down to this D over here. And you'll notice that that is five semitones from the G down to the D. So that is a perfect fourth interval. We don't want that. And this is kind of why it's confusing because if you count from the B, even though the B is actually sounding to the very end of the bar, if you count from the B up to the D, like that's great, that's three semitones, that's not a problem, that's a strong colorful interval. Um, but your ear is not gonna be hearing the B as the last note of the melody, it's going to be hearing this high G. So what we need to do is to trick the ear back down to the B, um, so then it hears the B as the last note, which then goes up really powerfully to the D. So all we do is we just play the B again. And as soon as we play the B again, now the B becomes the last note in that harmony. So then we get a nice strong interval from the B up to the D. And with that, we are done. Um, there's quite a lot to think about here. So uh, if you want my riffs hack, uh, you can grab that in the songwriting and producing PDF. The link is below. And just before I play the final version, if you want to firm up your music theory foundation, you can download our free book, 12 Music Theory Hacks to Learn Scales and Chords, or if you want our most tasty songwriting hacks, then you can join our brand new online apprenticeship program on Patreon. All the links are below, and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next Thursday on the Hack Music Theory Show. By the way, if you'd like to get notifications so you don't miss our new videos, then hit subscribe below and then hit the bell. Until next time, happy songwriting and producing.